want you to imagine it's the spring of 1943. Had there been prediction markets, you would have been right to place your bets on Nazi Germany for winning that war. The Allies were just a few months away from a completely different world map with a united Nazi Republic of Western Europe. Why? Nazi Germany had these things called U-boats, that submarines that looked ready to strangle the Atlantic, which they did. Two, they had planes of the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, which looked ready to bomb Western Europe into submission, which they did. And number three, two German scientists in January of 1939 discovered something called nuclear fission, splitting the atom, which put Hitler within reach of the most dangerous weapon ever created by man. What happened? Spring of 1943, the first B-24 Liberator bombers sailed out over the Atlantic with two new technologies from Vannevar Bush and his group of loons, crazy people working on crazy new ideas. One of those ideas was the forerunner of GPS, and that allowed planes to quickly find the convoys. The second technology was something called microwave radar. It allowed the pilots to see the U-boats, day or night, fog or shine. And that spring, in March of 1943, they began shooting down U-boats like shooting fish in a barrel. They sunk more U-boats in the first four weeks than they did in the entire prior war. And from that point forward, the outcome of the war was inevitable. Not many people realize how dangerously close we came to losing the Second World War. And even fewer people understand the role that Vannevar Bush played in turning the course of the war and saving us from the brink. Hello, I'm Safi Bacall, the author of Loon Shots, and Loon Shots is about how teams and companies can innovate faster and better. It's about what the science of phase transitions tells us about the behavior of groups. This is a glass of water, and when I stick my finger in and twirl it around, the molecules just slosh around my finger, and that's always true for any liquid except when I lower the temperature. Right at 32 Fahrenheit, the behavior of those molecules suddenly changes. I can't stick my finger in. The water suddenly freezes. Why? Molecules inside are exactly the same. So how did they know to suddenly change behavior? They just do it. And so what I'm going to show you is how understanding what happens inside that glass of water, which is called a phase transition, helped the Allies win the Second World War, and gives you three rules you can use to innovate faster and better. Not many people realize the role that Vannevar Bush played in turning the course of the Second World War in 1940. Vannevar Bush was Dean of Engineering at MIT, and he quit his job at MIT, moved to Washington, and talked his way into a meeting with President Franklin Roosevelt. It was a 10-minute meeting. It was probably the most important meeting of the war. He told FDR, there's a war coming, and we're going to lose. The U.S. Army and Navy are too far behind Nazi Germany and will never catch up. I want you to authorize a new group inside the federal government that will report only to me and I will report only to you, and I will mobilize the nation's scientists for war. FDR looked him up and down and said, okay, get started. So what was it that Vannevar Bush did? Number one, he didn't try to change military culture. He changed structure. He separated his artists, his creatives, working on wild, crazy new ideas where you want to take risk, from his soldiers, where you want to minimize risk. And he understood you don't try to change those cultures. You need those cultures and structures surviving side by side. Number two, he led like a gardener rather than a Moses. There's sort of this myth of leadership that the great leader stands like a Moses on top of a mountain and raises his or her staff and anoints the chosen project. But Vannevar Bush understood that that's not the case, that that's really a myth. When you look at the great companies and the most important leaders who built the most successful organizations over the course of history, that's not really how they led. They really lead much more like careful gardeners. They see their job as managing the touch and balance between the artists and the creatives and the soldiers. Why? Because the failure of innovation is never in the supply of new ideas. The failure in innovation is always in the transfer to the field. You can think of one group as a structure and a focus like the water in the liquid state, the molecules running around and free, and the other group as rigid, focused discipline like the ice. 
You need to have both coexist at the same time, and that only happens in one very special situation in nature, and that's right on the cusp of a phase transition, right at 32 Fahrenheit. That's when water and ice will coexist, neither side growing at the expense of the other. And so number two, be a gardener, not a Moses, means manage your group, manage your organization like life at 32 Fahrenheit. Achieve what's called dynamic equilibrium, where the molecules are going back and forth between these two states, but neither one is growing. They're coexisting happily together at the same time. And number three, what Vannevar Bush did, he learned to love his artists and soldiers equally. And if you focus too much on the soldiers and pay no attention to the artists, you'll demotivate that group. You need to learn to love your artists and soldiers equally. And that's what Vannevar Bush did. So that's how understanding what happens inside this glass of water, the science of phase transitions, helps us understand how the Allies won the Second World War and gives all of us three rules that we can use to design teams and companies that innovate faster and better.